Man, this ain't nothing but the Chiefs just being the Chiefs. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. And I appreciate y'all watching. Thank you for that. Um, now, Kansas City is a team that's known for, at least by me, I see I see them as a team that's always looking to add even more weapons. Now, of course, this offseason and one of the biggest trades of the NFL was the Chiefs trading Tyreek Hill to, to keeping him inside the AFC, but trading him to the Miami Dolphins. Uh, and that was a crazy move, a blockbuster move. It, it literally seemed like it happened within hours. Uh, but anyway, um, so after losing Tyreek Hill, they had a gaping hole at a deep threat speed type of receiver. Uh, they had signed Juju Smith-Schuster. He obviously not a Tyreek Hill. Um, then they went into the draft, and they took uh, Sky Moore uh, in the second round. Um, and that was the only receiver that they took, surprisingly. But you know what? The Chiefs, they, they never done. Like, because the situations I always get reminded of is when Josh Gordon, when he became available. Chiefs ain't need Josh Gordon. They ain't need no Josh Gordon. What do they do? They signed Josh Gordon. I remember when Le'Veon Bell became available. Chiefs ain't need no Le'Veon Bell. But what do they do? They signed Le'Veon Bell. Um, Trent, oh, what's the, the, the offensive lineman's name um, who is with the 49ers? Because I know, I remember the Chiefs, they had tried to sign him too. Even though they had made some big moves on the offensive line, that was a couple years back. I cannot think of his name right now, but it'll come to me later. But y'all know who I'm talking about. The, the 49ers left tackle. Can't remember his name. But anyway, my point, the Chiefs are always trying to upgrade. Now, the story with, uh, with Justin Ross, um, I, for me personally, I remember just watching film on him. I remember watching a draft, too, and thinking, okay. Um, I heard about the injury history, maybe like third, fourth round. Okay, he'd probably go around there. Nope. Nope. All right, maybe like fifth. Maybe, I don't think he's going to make it to the sixth round, but if he does, he'll get scooped up by somebody. Nope. Seventh round came around, I'm like, like, really? Seventh round? Justin Rock, I'm like, mm, I, if, well, we'll see. Nope. Nothing. 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 And I looked up the, the medical history in detail just to really see what was going on and why teams was just really scared. Because I had heard about it, but I wanted to see it for myself. So, 2015, his sophomore year of high school, he had an MCL sprain. That same year, uh, he had a right ACL tear. They said he got it playing basketball. Then in 2019, which in 2019, based off of that Justin Ross, that's a first-round draft pick. That's a first-round draft pick. But anyway, uh, in 2019, he had a hip injury that he got in against Syracuse. He only missed one game. Then in 2020, this is the one right here. This is the one. Uh, he had a congenital neck fusion. Uh, originally suffered stingers in practice in March. Uh, and he had a prior history of stingers, but he missed his entire junior year. Uh, and he also dealt with a bulging disc within his neck. So neck injuries are some of the scary. I think neck injuries and back injuries. Are some of the scariest injuries because there's no telling when they could pop up again is is no telling um they can be so unpredictable uh and especially with a neck injury that that's career threatening right there um so that that can just change not only your game but it can change your life uh and then 2021 said he had a stress fact fracture foot um and then then that he suffered in the preseason uh, and then he needed to get surgery on it. Um, so when I saw all of that, especially the, the, the neck injury, I'm like, oh, okay. Even still, um, I still expected somebody to take a chance. Like a, a low-round draft pick, it ain't like the contract is going to cost you much. Um, it's not like it, it's not big collateral, but it's like, oh, man, nothing. Nothing happened. Um, when I watched Justin Ross, um, he is 6'4". Uh, not swollen nothing but six four uh taller receiver um and he has he got some he got some good speed he ain't a burner nothing like that um and he's not the shiftiest but the hands are there that the hands hands are definitely there i love how he catches the ball um he has very very soft hands uh it's, it's like you're throwing a baby to him and he's catching it because you don't want to throw no baby to nobody who's gonna drop it. um but one thing i loved about him despite him sort of being 
because uh, it's weird because he's tall. He's a taller receiver, six four, but he's not the the biggest. But he still um, would drag defenders for a couple extra yards uh, on some of his catches. Um, he is really good at contested catches. You can throw the 50-50 ball to him. Uh, one of the things that I liked the most about him uh, was his concentration on his catches. One, I, one thing I really, really appreciated a lot is that he makes sure that he catches the before he turns up field. Because, you know, a lot of receivers, they be thinking ahead and thinking, I, I got to make the big play. I, I got to make the big play. I, I, I'm, I'm getting ready to make that big. Let's let's get it. But one thing that I appreciated about him is that he catches the ball and he concentrates on making that catch before trying to turn up field. Uh, and I, I appreciated that. He is a very, in my eyes, he's a very smooth route runner. Um, so that is that's another benefit of him because, you know, for some guys, if they like just tall, like the six four, that's really tall. If some guys are just tall, they may not be as fluid. Uh, as a guy like maybe like six foot, six one, and of course any shorter than that. Um, but he's smooth, smooth. Not not the he ain't got the most wiggle or nothing like that. And I don't really think he gonna be like shaking people like that or nothing. But he does have the yak ability. Uh, and of course, like I said, he will drag somebody uh, for those extra yards. He'll he'll fight for him. So I appreciated that. But again. He ain't scared to go across the middle. He ain't scared to for the jump balls. You could throw those to him all day. And, I mean, in Kansas City, you know, sometimes Patrick Mahomes, he'll run around, scramble around for a little bit, then just launch it up. And, hey, if he feels like you that guy. I mean, he did it with Tyreek Hill a million times. With Tyreek Hill, like 5'10", 5'11". But Tyreek Hill, he would go up and jump for that thing, man. That dude. Tyreek Hill is a monster, man. Um, But with Justin Ross, is it a given that he's going to make the team? No, of course not. But... In this situation, in this team, I am very curious to see what type of opportunity he gets. Now, of course, he is going to have to earn his spot like crazy. He's going to have to do so much to make it on the roster. But if he can get a shot, this can be a very, very special uh, special uh, situation. Special situation for him uh, for the Chiefs, for that, that type of offense that he would be going into. Because the thing about them, they, they spread that ball around. They they spread that ball around. Um, and with the Chiefs, they lost Tyreek Hill. I believe they lost Pringle to the Bears, I'm pretty sure. Because I think that whole little story came out about him a couple of days ago. Uh, so hopefully he get that situated. Um Again, but they drafted Sky Moore, signed Juju, so those two are definitely going to get a lot of opportunities. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm a little murky about what their wide receiver situation is uh, right now. Of course, they got Travis Kelce, one of the, one of the best tight ends in the league. Um, so yeah, his opportunity early on it may come far and few, but that's all it takes, man. Sometimes that's all it takes is to just get that chance. So. Even if you do get seldom and few opportunities, if you're making the most of them when you get them, then the coaching staff sees that, fans see that, players see that, and everybody can vouch for you to get even more when your time comes. Um, so I'm happy for him. I'm happy for Justin Ross. Uh, I um, There was one point where I was hoping my Ravens would draft him. I, I, I was because uh, we ain't even got to get into their receiver situation. We talk about that when we talk about Ravens. Um, but he's in a uh, a good spot. And again, worst case scenario, worst case, it doesn't work out. Worst case. It's a worst case scenario. But best case scenarios, there's obviously him making the active roster. It's going to be an uphill battle. A an uphill battle. He's going to have to do a, a lot of fighting to make it on the roster. But then there's the practice squad too. That's another opportunity to be on the practice squad. Running with the scout team and whatnot, doing that. So there's that. So he has options. And I know a lot of people, um, as opposed to being either a late round draft pick, whether sixth or seventh round draft pick, um, there can be an argument said sometimes that oh, maybe being an undrafted uh free an undrafted rookie free agent, it can be even better. Because as an undrafted rookie free agent, you get to choose where you want to go. You get to choose. Um and I'm sure, of course, sixth and seventh round picks, they appreciate the opportunity that's been given to them being drafted by an NFL team. Because this is, you're being drafted by a professional football team. 
This is what you dreamed of. This is what you work for. Um, but you don't get to choose. But as an undrafted rookie free agent, all right, you weren't drafted, which is tough. It's tough. But the opportunity, it doesn't mean that it's over. Doesn't mean that your chance to make the NFL is over. Doesn't mean that, all right, well, I guess I got to pack it up now. Move on. Oh, well, I guess I got to quit now. Move on. No. You, you get to, if you've received offers, of course, then you get to choose whatever team from wherever you're offered. Sometimes you may receive multiple offers. Sometimes you may not. Um, but Justin Ross, again, I think he's in a really good situation uh, going to Kansas City. So we'll see how it works out for him. Hopefully it does because um, I, I would love to see him like really get a shot uh, on Sundays.